Hello everyone, in this lecture we will be solving 1986 IMO problem number 5. Here's a view of this problem. We are given a function f defined on, uh, from non-negative real numbers to non-negative real numbers. Uh, and um, these three conditions hold and we need to find all functions that satisfy these three conditions. Um, so apparently the function is not equal to zero in the following range and at two exactly it's equal to uh, zero and we don't know what happens when um when the function uh the, when the uh, domain is more than two um to begin with uh, i will um um let's start with what happens between zero and two so let's go back to this condition so what we will do is um, I'll, I'll start with the um, with uh, let's say here. Okay, let, let me split it carefully. Okay, so um, the f we start with this case first. So zero is less than or equal to. So let's fix um, a y in this range, right? So um, and so therefore uh, such that so which implies that f of y is definitely not equal to zero, right? And let's see what we will get out of this. So I want to make use of the first property, obviously, that's uh, the key here. Um, so we can start with the observation that, well, zero is equal to f of two, and I will be uh, very interested in um, splitting the two here in, in, in the following way. Um, I can write it as two minus y, recognizing that y was in this range, right? I can do it um plus plus y now you just re now applying as i said the first result we get that uh, this is equal to f of oops 2 minus y times um f of uh, f of y and uh, times f oops of y okay so i just simply apply the definition and just make sure you understand that uh, 2 minus y is is positive because f itself is between uh, 0 and 2 uh, but um, notice that because f of y is never equal to 0 in this range right so that's given in uh, in property 3 it must be the case that this guy is equal to 0 so which uh, brings us to the case that uh, for this to be zero, for this function, the inside can never be less than two, right? The inside, the, the, the domain of this function, so what is inside here can never be two. So it's greater than, so the inside, so this implies that the inside, which is two minus y times uh, f of y, is greater than or equal to 2 at the least. Now on the other hand, notice that if I plug in, so going back to the first condition, in i, if I plug in x equals 2 over f of y, um, I, I get a very interesting result, so look, look this out, so it, it, it plays out greatly, so we get f of x plus y, which is by definition equal to f of x times f of y times f of y. But now we decided to replace x with 2 over f of y. So we have f of 2 over f of y times f of y times f of y, which is simply equal to f of 2 times f of y. But wait, f of 2 is simply equal to 0 from the second condition. So this whole thing, uh, so this guy is 0. So this whole thing is equal to 0. Uh, f of x plus y will only be 0 if the inside of it, the domain inside, uh, x plus y itself is, um, is not less than 2, right? Because under the third property, if it's less than 2, that can never be equal to 0, right? So therefore, so following from this second column here, it implies that x plus y is greater than or equal to 2. <coughs> and moving things around, further, this would imply that x is greater than or equal to 2 minus 
y. That's exactly the result that I wanted because notice how we started with x, right? So I can replace x with 2 over f of y here. So that would imply that 2 over f of y is greater than or equal to 2 minus y. And after moving things around, yeah, with the cross product, we get that f of y times uh, 2 minus y is uh, less than or equal to 2. Now compare this with our earlier result, huh, which is, which is, look at this result here, and compare it with this one. Now these two inequalities will only hold simultaneously if um, there's an equality, right? So therefore, oops, so therefore this implies, oops, uh, doing it like this, so sorry for the, okay, so this implies that f of um, oh, good f of y itself is actually equal to um, uh, 2 over uh, 2 minus y when um, uh, well when y is in the range uh, when y is between 0 and 2 now the, the easy part is uh, the remaining part when what happens when uh, y is greater than or equal to 2 so um, finally so so we, we are done with the first case for the second case what happens when y is greater than or equal to 2 in fact we will use the same uh, um, splitting trick that we did uh, at the very early beginning so f of y is simply equal to because y is greater than or equal to 2 I can write it as y minus 2 plus 2 and um, that thing is equal to um, applying the definition obviously f of uh, y minus 2 times f of 2 times f of 2 again but f of 2 is 0 so that whole thing will become 0 and, and we are done so therefore to conclude we can say that um, f of y is simply equal to 0 when, um, when y is greater than or equal to 2. And, and those two relations, um, uh, expressions, will, will completely define f of y on the given range, uh, on the given domain. Uh, so that and that completely define our uh, function f and, and we are done.